us to the front and let's have a look at this question. Again, ladies and gents, here is where exam techniques come in. Because I saw quite a few of you, that's why I jumped in and I said, please don't determine the equation. Because to determine the equation of that thing, guys, is going to take you at least half a page. If you are lucky enough to find it. Okay, because here's the problem. If you made the assumption that F is, has a parabolic part, you might be wrong. How do you know? How do you know that's not maybe a part of a cubic graph? You don't know. You've got to be careful. But the mark allocation should guide you. If I look at the first question, the first question most of you would have gotten right, hopefully. If I look at the domain, x is an element of, let's look at the lowest x value. If I look on my graph, the lowest x value, the lowest x value, if I look right to the left, is negative 5. Okay? But my graph does include negative 5. It does. At some point, it does include it. And then the highest x value, if I look far on the right, is at x equal to 1. But it doesn't include that one. If I look at the range of f, the range of f is y is an element of, the lowest y value is at negative 4, right at the bottom, and it doesn't touch it because it's not included. The highest y value is at 6. And again, it doesn't touch 6. Okay. Now, ladies and gents, for, for some of you, I gave a nice little tip for, for the B part because at the B part is where stuff be, starts to become funky. Because now at the A part, it was easy. The B part, they start talking about f to the negative 1 of x. Please, again, here's where theory is important. F to the negative 1 of x means what? Okay, we call it the... Uh, 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 that's where we've got to be careful. It's the inverse function. Okay? For the BLT test. Okay, is there any of you students, sorry ladies and gents, that are here for the BLT winter school? Not for the junior tax went to school? Okay. No, probably not. Cool. Okay. Now, ladies and gents, if I look at f to the negative 1, it means inverse function. What happens with inverse functions? x and y swap around. So your output values become your input, and your input becomes your output. Now, here again, I have found... A lot of you guys try and do this stuff in your head. I have learned long time ago in my life that I don't do too much in my head because, especially in exams, your head is not thinking straight. So because they're asking me things about f to the negative 1, why don't I draw it? I've got all the necessary information. Let me draw f to the negative 1, and then I look from there. So if I look at f to the negative 1, I'm going to take every coordinate starting, well, anywhere. I'm going to start at the top with that open circle, which is at the coordinate negative 5 and 6. And what happens to them? What happens to them? x and y swap around. So it's going to be at x equal to 6 and y equal to negative 5, open circle. 
And again, I'm doing it very rough. Ladies, please don't go and do it on scale, okay? Please don't. It takes time. Then I'm going to look at the second coordinate that is important. That's at negative 3 and 2. So I'm going to swap that around, and that is at 2 and negative 3. And I know there's simply a line that connects them. Then I look at my, my turning point, what looks like a turning point, which is at negative 5 and 0. So now it's going to be at 0 and negative 5. And again, it looks like kind of a turning point. Then the next point that's important is at negative 3 and negative 2. So it's going to be at negative 2 and negative 3. And again, it's a parabolic part. It looks like parabola joining it there. Then, the last important part is at 1 and negative 4. So I'm going to swap it around so it's going to be at negative 4 and 1. So it kind of looks like that. You will see it's not on scale, and scale doesn't matter for me at all. Now, I've got a much, more, a much clearer picture to answer B, C, and D. Because if I look at the first one, it tells me f of negative 1 times by f to the negative 1 of negative 2. I apologize, that bracket 2 should be the mark allocation. But if I look at this, now I look at my graph. Let's go to my graph that's drawn at the top. This is now my y value on the sketch. What is the y value when x is negative 1? So when x is negative 1, I go down and I look and my answer is negative 3. Everyone's all right with that. Now, I have a sketch for f to the negative 1. I have a sketch for f to the negative 1. So if I now ask myself, what is the x value when y, what, what is the y value when x is negative 2? And my answer is negative 3. Oh, but then that is simply 9. And they have answered the question. Ladies and gents, that's why everything in maths builds up towards graphs. Everything in maths builds towards graphs. Even when you go to engineering, everything goes about graphs because if I understand a graph, then I understand what's happening. And I can do all the maths that goes on behind it. Is there anybody that doesn't understand where I get these values of negative 3 and negative 3 from? You guys all waxed. You guys all good. If you, please again, for the guys that came in new, guys, if you get stuck, if you, if you don't understand, please put up your hands. I don't want to move on before everyone's good. Okay. Great. Seems like everyone's good. Now they ask you a question. Would f to the negative 1 of x, my function that I've drawn for you guys, would that be a function? How do I test for a function? By drawing a vertical line. Is there any part where my vertical line crosses my graph more than once? No. So is it a function? Yes. But now you've got to be careful. They say also explain your answer. Now you are not allowed to these days anymore say it passes the vertical line test. You've got to describe the relationship between the x values and the y values. 
Now, it's for every, oh, let me say this. There are certain x values where one, or certain y values, where one y value gives you more than one x value. So, my answer for C is, yes, it is a function, but why it is a many to one function. In other words, many x values gives me one y value. And those functions are, or those relationships are functions. And there I've got my two marks. Without the sketch, good luck. It's all I'm saying to you. Without drawing f to the negative one, good luck trying to analyze this. And that's what some of you trying to do, or most of you. And that's okay, that's why we are here. Okay? Now, the next question is just as easy. The D part of the question. The D part of this question, for which values of x will f to the negative 1 of x be decreasing? Okay, now here again, monkey and mountain. I want to know x values. So I know my final answer has to be x values. But the mountains. How would I know whether a function is decreasing? Say again. Okay. As x increases, the y values decrease. That's visually. How about algebraically? Come on. Yes, sir. Fantastic. That is... That now can be interpreted either algebraically or visually. As my graph, my gradient of my graph is negative. Now, how do I determine the gradient of my graph? First derivative. That is now algebraically. But why wouldn't I go there? Because it's... I don't have an equation, guys. Guys, you can see it. Thank you. It's kind of awesome, but it's logic. But again, if you're in the exam, logic doesn't always work so nice. Because you're not thinking straight. Okay? So you've got to say, I can go towards first derivative and put it less than naught, but now I first got to get fx. For two marks. Think carefully. Not wrong, but think carefully. So in other words, I'm just going to look, where is my graph decreasing? Well, there it's going down and down and down. But here all of a sudden it's going. So I don't want that part. So again, the, here the graph is decreasing. So that's going to be my answers. Now, I'm going to give it in interval notation just because I like interval notation. For x between negative 4 and 0, it does it touch. Uh, this one actually is wrong. It should be open. And none of you correct me. Cease. Cease. Okay, and it does touch 0. But then again, I'm going to say or from 2 to 6. And it doesn't touch 6. It decreases only at those parts. Ladies and gents, please, when working with inverses, don't try and do it in your head. Don't try and prove how smart you are. Well, how you know, so I can do it in my head. It doesn't matter. In the exam, you want to be able to show them. 
So I always advise you, if you have a sketch and they ask you about the inverse, always, always, always draw the inverse. And it's easy. Swap all the X's and Y's and draw a rough sketch. 